Would you stand with me one more time for the reading of the word today? Thank you, Father. Can we just set our hearts towards the Lord again just one more time? Lord Jesus, prepare our hearts this afternoon. Holy Spirit, speak expressly through these lips of clay to our hearts of flesh. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit would say to the church in this day and in this hour. God, let us be open. Let us be pliable. You are the potter. We are the clay. Let us allow you to speak into our hearts in such a way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You may be seated. I almost started rhyming like Brother Bagley there. <laughs> Amen. I was going to keep you standing for we read, but that's okay. I got ahead of myself. I want to minister today on this title, I Want More. And somebody say that with me, I Want More. Depending on how you say that, that could sound like a greedy statement. But when it comes to the kingdom of God and when it comes to seeking the Lord, it should be the cry of every individual's heart that I'm not satisfied with where I've been. I'm content in the Lord, but I'm hungry for more. I'm content in the Lord, but I'm not satisfied at how far I've come in that I've not stopped reaching and I've not yet stopped pressing. I realize that I've not arrived yet. You see, the problem with a lot of folks is they think that they've arrived in the heaven. A lot of folks haven't even left the terminal and they think they've arrived. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> there is so much more to our God than you've ever experienced. And I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care how much you think you know. God is great. God is awesome. He can blow your mind in a second with one revelation that turns everything upside down, that just blows your mind. He's a God of truth. He's infinite. He's awesome. Awesome in power. Awesome in wisdom. Awesome in knowledge. He contains secrets and mysteries. You know, there's a mystery to God. A mystery to Him. Where He desires for us to seek Him that he might unfold to us mysteries, mysteries, and reveal to us secret things that are not hidden from us, but things that are hidden for us. The wisdom of God unto the church. I want more. I think there's a lot of people today that have become too passive in their faith. They're spinning their tires, they're going through the motions, and there's an absence of that propelling hunger. You know what I mean by propelling hunger? The kind of hunger that causes you to seek, but also causes you to move. Causes you to look for, also puts you in action, where you want more of God. You see, we're too busy sometimes waiting for somebody else to get us there instead of taking the steps that we need to take to get ourselves there and just follow the Lord as He is calling us to deeper places. He's ready to reveal Himself. He's ready to pour out in your life. And in these last days that are the days that we live in, the Scripture said that He would pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. All flesh, that our sons and our daughters would prophesy. God wants to move in your life. God wants to move in your family's life. God wants to touch your kids. We see the agenda of the enemy in this last day. He's going after the youth. He's going after kids radically. Radically. The agenda of the enemy, you see these things that go on in libraries and different places. You see the agenda of the enemy targeting, it, targeting even the smallest. It's the agenda of the enemy because it's the agenda of God. 
God wants to move in your kids' lives. Your kids have callings on their lives. You know, the blessing of the Lord, it is generational. Giftings that God will put in one, he'll put in families. That's why when you see one family that contains giftings or, or, or anointing, you know that it is transferable down to their children and to their grandchildren. Many times when one is called to ministry, their descendants after them are called to ministry. Not, not, not all the time, but ministry in different ways at least. Your children are called. Your children have a purpose for the work of God and for the kingdom of God. That's the reason the enemy wants to fill their hearts and fill their minds with so many other things that they would fail to uncover the purpose of God that is in their life. Now in John 7 and 37, Jesus says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. Somebody say it loud. The Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Spirit now like we've never needed the Holy Spirit before. In a day where so many Christians are ashamed of the moving and the manifesting of the power of God and the moving of the Holy Spirit, God is also raising up a people that are hungry, that are tired of status quo, that don't just want stale dead religion. Many people are sitting in dead churches. Wanting a move of God. But that church is adamant against a move of God. <laughs> if you're in a church that wants a move of God, get with that. Get with it. Get with the vision. Move with what the Lord is saying. Let there be hunger in you that causes you to reach for more. More. And grasp on to the deeper places that God has been calling you to. But many people will sit in dead churches where the doctrine is literally to stifle the move of God. And want a revival. I, 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 I seen a lady one time leave a Pentecostal church and go to a church that had no instruments. Not because they were just lacking talent. They just didn't believe in it. And where women weren't allowed to speak in church. Which I found very ironic because this woman loved to testify for long periods of time. <laughs> but had a persuasion in her mind that she was able to change that church. <laughs> Foolish thinking like that will pe keep people confined. You're not here to change your church. But maybe you can inspire somebody. Maybe you can inspire somebody. If you get hungry, hunger is contagious. Hunger flows. Can you imagine Jesus standing up in that day with this voice and with this cry? If anybody's thirsty, come on to me. I have waters that you've never tasted of, wherein you will never thirst again. And they will be in your belly, a river of living water. And he spoke of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given because he had not yet ascended. He spoke to them a mystery. But let me tell you something today. The same Holy Ghost that was poured out in Acts chapter number 2, where the church was filled with the Spirit and spoke with other tongues, not just one and not just the eleven, 
But all that had assembled, because the Holy Ghost didn't just pick and choose which that gift was fitted for, it was fitted for all of them. <laughs> it was fitted for all of them. Well, that's just really not for me. Well, you need to read your Bible because it was for all of them. It was for all of them. And just because you haven't experienced something doesn't mean that it's not for you. When you hunger and thirst, it leads you to the place where you get filled. When something gets your attention and there is a strong desire, there is a propelling and a drawing that starts to take place. And people will gravitate towards wrong things in the same fashion, or they will gravitate towards the right things when something starts catching their attention. I think we need to talk to our children about the Holy Ghost. Pray over our children to have the Holy Ghost. Like, we got to get diligent about this stuff in 20 and 23. Because the enemy is on a radical agenda. To fill the children with other things, we got to get them filled with the Holy Ghost. With the Word of God. Equipped with the armor of God and the sword of the Spirit. That they would know how to stand in this world that is falling apart. Hallelujah. The enemy looks to tear apart families. But God is in the redemption business. And He will redeem families. He will redeem families where alcohol has had its way. Grandfather was an alcoholic. Dad was an alcoholic. Now it just begins to flow throughout the whole family. A curse from one to another. But God can redeem a family. My dad got saved and he was the only person in his family that got saved out of that family. God will reach in and take somebody out. And I realize that doesn't exactly solidify the statement that I'm saying about God wanting to reach a whole family. But at the same time, it's amazing to me how God will just reach in and pull one out. You've got to be able to stand in this day even if you stand alone. You have to be able to stand this day even if your co-workers don't stand with you. You have to be able to stand in this day even if your spouse doesn't stand with you. You have to be able to stand this day even if your government doesn't stand with you. You have to be able to stand in this day even if your family is against you. To stand for the cross. To stand for the cause of Jesus. To love the Lord. It's funny, some people will get uptight when your life changes for the better. They'll almost get upset at you. Because your life has changed for the better. And you, you just can't participate in the pity party with them like you used to. You can't share in the same worthless things. Weak and beggarly things that once held you bound and captive. You can't do it. At least not in good conscience. Hello somebody. At least not in good conscience. Because when you're born again... Your conscience also comes alive. <laughs> In places it was dead. Well, how come this is bothering me now? It didn't bother me last week. <laughs> you were dead. Dead in trespasses, dead in iniquities. Now you've been made to be the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. It doesn't agree with what you've made to be. It doesn't agree with the spirit that is in you. It's not of the Holy Spirit. It's another spirit. And it will grieve your heart because it grieves the spirit of God. But what happens so many times is people will maintain their disobedience. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> maintain their disobedience and try and nullify their conscience. They'll even try and use scriptures. <laughs> There's no condemnation to them which are in Jesus Christ. Shut up, stupid conscience. <laughs> and while it is very true, there is no condemnation to them which are in Jesus Christ. 
And Phil brought up the example on Wednesday night that I often use. You know, someone goes to the strip club on Saturday and comes into church on Sunday like nothing's wrong. It's an extreme example, sure, but likely happens once in a while. (laughs) Now, should that person stay home because of what they did? Should they come to church the next Sunday? Well, they need God's help, don't they? Well, they need to hear the word of God. They need something that's going to snap foo them out of that place. I don't know if that's the right word. (laughs) Pull them out of that place. Shake them out of whatever kind of mind that is getting them back into those things. And they're not going to get that just running with the same crowd that they were with on Saturday night. So yes, you need to get to church, but you also need to seek God when you get to church. Repent when you get to church. Get with God. You see, the problem comes when people try and shut down their conscience and act like everything's just okay. They're not listening to the voice of God that is speaking in their hearts where the Lord is trying to lead them to repentance so times of refreshing can come from the presence of the Lord. Trying to rescue them. Because he wills for them better things. Because he is God. Because he is God. And we are his people. And not the other way around. We live for him. And not he living for us. We don't ask God to adjust himself to fit our lifestyle. We're the ones that need adjustment. Hello. (laughs) We're the ones that need adjusting. We're the ones that need our oil changed. We're the ones that need the tune-ups. We're the ones that sometimes need a whole engine job because we have gotten that far out of the way. But God is always perfect. And His plan for us is always perfect. And His plan for us is always good. So many times people deviate from the will of God and find themselves in all kinds of trouble. And then they start talking like, well, you know what? I just felt like this is really what God wanted all along. He just wanted me to go through all of this so I could learn some things. No, that's not what he wanted. He wanted you to learn without going there. (laughs) Well, all things work together for good to them that are called. That, that, That wasn't what God was doing. That's what you were doing. Don't try and pass off the temptation of Satan as though God had his hand in your disobedience. Getting quiet in here. I might as well just keep on this good preaching going. Don't try and tie God's goodness to your disobedience, as though he was trying to bring something good out of your sin. No, no, no. He was made sin. He was made sin that we would be made righteous now it is true that when we get right with god we bring to him the low down the down the ugly the 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 gritty the, the the our shortcomings our failings all of our hurts all of our mess and we bring that to the lord and he can bring good things even out of the things that we've been through but he's a good father And I don't tell my kids, you know, go run out in the road, get smashed by that Ford, and then you'll understand why you don't play in the road. Hey, there's a bottle of Lysol under the sink. Go have a swig. You'll understand why you're not supposed to drink that stuff. Even in 2023, that's not good parenting. There's a better way. The way is this. Listen to what the Lord has said. Have a heart that is formable by God. Have a heart that is hungry for God. Have a heart that thirsts for Him. Like the psalmist said, my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Not everybody wants that. Not everybody wants him. But if you are here today and there is a hunger on the inside of you for God, the Bible said they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. It's God's promise. It's God's promise. You don't have to wait for somebody else to go get it for you. You can get hungry. Hallelujah. 
I found in my life that when I get hungry enough, I will get motivated to go to the fridge. And sometimes even when I'm not that hungry. (laughs) Don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. Just want something to eat. Hunger is a great motivation. It's amazing how it'll just move you to places. That's why you're not supposed to grocery shop when you're hungry. The bill has a tendency just to get higher and higher and higher. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that looks good. Oh, I should have had a hamburger before I came here because I want to eat everything that's in Superstore. (laughs) Hunger is a great motivator. You know, there's a place in the Bible in the book of Acts, in chapter number 19, where it tells that Paul came to Ephesus and he found certain disciples there. But Paul, inquiring a little further and deeper as to what level these people were on, he asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they say, no, we've not. We've not even heard of what this Holy Ghost is. They didn't say, oh, well, we're Episcopalian. No, we don't, we don't participate with that. They just said, we don't know what that is. We don't know what that is. And he says, what baptism were you baptized under? And they said, we're baptized under the baptism of John. Amazingly, these people were still referred to as disciples. They they had initially begun. They had accepted or received Jesus as Lord and Savior. But there was places of truth that they had not yet come into. But here's the messenger bringing it to them. I said, here's the messenger bringing it to them. Now they have opportunity to to respond to the word of the Lord or to write a doctrine as to why they can't. (laughs) To fashion a new doctrine as to why that's not for them. Oh, this Holy Ghost stuff sounds a little bit different to us, Paul. We don't need any of that. We're actually pretty comfortable with what we've been. You know, this is what they taught us. That's what we've known. That's what we've always known. That's what we've always known. This is what Grandma said. And so I just, this is, I'm just kind of good here. You know, you know, thanks for sharing with us, but we're not really open. To, no, there was a, it, the word of God brought a response and a hunger on the inside of them. And so they were baptized, response. Hunger moved them into action, response. And Paul laid hands on them and the Holy Ghost came upon them. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit again gave utterance. Hallelujah. It wasn't just to one or to this one or let me, let, let's see if that's your gifting. No, this was the prayer language that God was given to every one of them that they would be filled with the Spirit with the evidence of other tongues. It's not just for somebody else. It's for you today, my friend. It's for you today. Will you be hungry? Will you desire it if it is the case that you've not yet partaken of that? But for those of us who have, let me give you some other news. That's not the end. (laughs) That's not the end. That's not time to coast. You've got filled for a purpose. You didn't just get filled to be a bystander. He filled you so you could go into action for God's kingdom. I want to move on to my next point here. Make Jesus everything. Make Jesus everything. Don't let Jesus just be an addition in your life, like a side item. You got your meatloaf and you got your potatoes, but Jesus is like the carrots. Just a little bit of Jesus on there because I know I'm supposed to. Don't even like carrots. I just want a little bit because I know I'm supposed to. That's how some people approach their walk with God. Fill their lives with everything else and then, oh, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. There's so much more to living a spirit-led life and a spirit-filled life than just having this little tiny bit or this little icing at the end of the day that you would realize that God would consume your whole life and fill up your life with his goodness. Fill up your life with his kindness. Fill up your life with truth that he would unravel within you the purpose of why it is that you are on this earth. And that's not just to try and be like everybody else. 
and just be conformed to the world. Just be conformed to the customs of that day. Well, this is just how it is in 2023. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God has purpose for you. God has purpose for you. You might be unique. Good. God made you unique. It amazes me still how many people are upon the face of the earth, and yet we still have different DNA. It amazes me even still that, you know, with the exception of the rare doppelganger, that none of us look the same. <laughs> even though we might have similarities sometimes, like, that's just amazing to me. Like if I sat down with a paper and pen, I can draw a couple faces and then I'm, I'm running out of stuff. But God makes His people unique. Hallelujah. I have a different flavor. Amen. I might not preach as good as everybody else, but nobody else has my flavor. Nobody else is quite like me. You might think I'm the best, you might think I'm the worst, but hey, I'm me, and I'm glad in what God is doing in my life, and I'm going to be true to what He's called me to do. You can't change yourself and fashion yourself to try and please people, but live to please God. I said live to please God. People pleasers, they're always trying to, they're always reacting to everybody's opinion. They, they have a hard time holding on to their identity or really uncovering who they are. They're always letting people jostle them around. Now don't misunderstand me, we all have the same Bible. Come on, somebody say amen to that. We all have the same Bible and the same truth. But there is a uniqueness within that, that the truth applied to our life brings out the flavor that God has put on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Amen. That, that, that's, that's a say law thing there. You've got to think on that a little bit. Jesus said in Matthew 16 and 24 that Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. This is New Living Translation. You must give up your own way. If you want to follow Jesus, you must give up your own way. Make Jesus everything. Christian today, Christianity today, and I, th I speak broadly, it's just so complacent. Oh, I go to church once in a while. Devotions, maybe. We'll see. See what I come across on Facebook. So filled with other things that God easily gets placed on the back burner. And I'm not trying to condemn you today. I'm just trying to stir you up today that you can get a recognition that there is something so much more. There is so much more. And people are like, well, they talk about go to church. Are you really, people go to church every week. Are you kidding me? Every week? Yeah, how about more than once a week? Like, I don't think even two times a week is enough church, really. I think we need more church. You know, they, they used to have revivals in the day that, that would be month-long revivals. Two-month revivals. Church every night. And out of that would come a great move of God, and out of that churches would literally be born. But yet today it sounds so strange to some people just to think of attending church more than once a week, or to some people more than twice a year. What, what, am, what are you saying? I'm saying make Jesus everything. It might sound a little radical, but so did his statement where he said, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. You want to see God move in your family? Start doing this. Start doing this. Start laying aside your way and start following God. Watch what God will start doing in your life and those around you. Watch how he will start sharpening you, making you an object, making you a weapon, hallelujah, that, 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 that is useful in the ministry and useful for the kingdom of God, where you will bring light into this world that is full of darkness. If you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, Jesus said, you will find it, hallelujah. So we adjust our lives to him, not the other way around. You don't just find a church that, that, that tries to cater to your lifestyle. 
You want a church that speaks the truth. That speaks the truth. That caters not to you, but to the word of God. That's not worried about offending you, but is worried about offending God. That's what we should be mindful of. I don't, I'm not so worried about stumbling over you, although people stumble over everybody all the time. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is Lord. How come you don't go to church anymore? Oh, somebody offended me. Why are you taking that out on Jesus? Why was your relationship so thin that somebody, that somebody was able to separate you from your pursuit of Him and your relationship with Him because somebody hurt your feelings? There's got to be something that is a lot bigger and stronger than that on the inside of you that says, I love Him. I love Him. And though none go with me, still I will follow. Where He's Lord. He's Lord. Not the person who looked at you funny in church last week. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Not the person who said, oh, I'm not coming to your church anymore. I don't like this. Oh, well, too bad for you. Jesus is Lord. I'm still going to go worship Jesus. I don't care what reason you got to stop going to church. Find another one if that's, what you really, if that's really what you want to do. Well, there's no good churches around. No good churches, no good, no church good enough for some people. You're going to tell me, like, we live in a, this isn't rural Saskatchewan. I'm from, I, I came, I moved here from rural Saskatchewan. There wasn't a lot of Holy Ghost filled churches in that area. The town we lived in, towns we were around there, not very many. They had your traditional churches. There, was, there wasn't a lot of spirit filled churches or spirit filled messages. But I've come to Ontario now. There's a lot of population here. Even in Brockville, I realize we're not in the metropolis. I, I, get, I get it. But I don't got to go very far, and I can find somewhere else. Am I trying to tell people to go to another church? No, that wasn't my motivation in saying this. <laughs> Amen. I'm not trying to burn down the house that we're building for the Lord. <laughs> But dealing with that attitude that says there's nothing good enough for me. There's nothing good enough for me. Why don't you be the difference? Why don't you be the difference? Well, I'm not going to church there. Nobody worships. I've seen people like, I like the churches that run the aisles. I like the churches that dance out in the aisles. How come I've never seen you run the aisles or dance out in the aisles? It's funny, you love that in church, but you don't do that. You want someone else to do that for you. You want someone else to worship you there. Maybe you're there and the season you're in right now is because God is telling you, you need to worship. You need to worship. You need to engage like you want other people to engage. Don't come to church and wait for everybody else to engage for you. So I'm going to this next part. If you want to be a person who wants more, get invested. This is my next point. Get invested. Get invested in God's kingdom. There is no greater cause. There is nothing greater that you can give your life to. Align your purpose with God's kingdom. If you're called to the marketplace and you have business, align your business with God's kingdom, with God's purpose in your life. Because there is no part of your life that he wants to leave untouched where he will reveal himself he will reveal himself through your workplace. He will reveal himself through your business, through the ideas that he's been giving you. This all doesn't just happen on a Sunday morning. But all through the stages and the course of your life, God wants to reveal himself and move. Get invested. Get invested in God's kingdom. Put your energy into God's kingdom. Put your thoughts into God's kingdom. You know what God desires? souls amen god desires souls you want to please god he that winneth souls is wise he that winneth souls is wise you want to know what god's heart beats for his heart beats for the lost he'll jump over 10 christians to get to the lost sheep he'll leave the 99 to find the one to bring them back into the fold this is the one that has really lost their way and not the one that's just being stubborn and saying, I'm waiting for somebody to call me. 
Amen. I told you before, I had one guy who would stay home from church and wait for me to call, and when I'd call, he wouldn't answer the phone. (laughs) But he wanted that phone call. People play church games because they get religious attitudes. And they, they, they've stopped that seeking in their heart. Get invested in God's kingdom. Get invested in your church. Get invested in the work of the Lord. Like, get invested in there. Get, be a part of it. Don't just be an attender. Be more than that. Be invested into it. This is my church. I love my church. I love what God's doing in my church. Happy to be a part of it. Want to advance the work of God. Want to be a part of what God is doing. Want to move with the vision that is being raised. If you're going to be invested in it, you won't be a problem in it. Or very little, at least. (laughs) Amen? People might stumble in error sometimes. But they won't intentionally be an obstructor. So I'm going to talk about a few practical things and ways that you can be a blessing and be invested in your church. Point number one, don't be a problem. I know that's deep. I know that's deep, but don't be a problem. Don't look to be a problem. Don't look to make it harder for the pastor. Think, how can I make it easier for them in the work that they're doing for the Lord. Well, I got to obstruct them. I mean, somebody has to. Who are you, Satan? I mean, who sent you? (laughs) No, you're here to further and advance. And sometimes that means just being here and being glad to be here. (laughs) Amen? I've seen people come to church and sit there like, like their mom just made them come. And they're 30 years old. I don't even want to be here. They invited me. I didn't even want to come. I could be, I could be binge watching my 10th episode right now, sitting in church. It's amazing. People know we don't have time for church, but you got a lot of time for Netflix. You got a lot of time for hockey. A lot of time for Little League. I'm not bashing those things, but keep God priority. Keep God priority. Keep God number one. You don't hear preaching like this near as much as you should. But guess what? It's important. And because things like that haven't been initialized in the family or people not living from those kind of places, we've seen a departure of families from the church. But guess what? It's coming back again. Hallelujah. It's coming back again. We're going to start seeing families, glory to God as we already are, that are hungry for the Lord. And will be strong and will be steadfast. They will have a heart to raise up their kids in the things of God. And to be seekers of God their own selves. So don't be a problem. Don't be an obstructionist. Don't look to get in the way. Look to help to make a way. John and Diane aren't here today. I miss them. They've been gone for several weeks now in St. Thomas. I miss them when they're here. You know why? John comes in and he smiles. And he walks around, he makes silly jokes with people. He doesn't say mean things. He, he just makes silly jokes and he smiles and he's happy to be here. Diana comes in and she worships. She comes up front and she just, she worships. She's happy to be in church. Amen, Pastor Rob. Amen, Pastor Rob. Which is another great point. When you're in church, get engaged. Somebody say amen again. Get engaged. Like you got yourself here. Why not go all the way with it? You got yourself to church. Why not put something into it and you'll get that much more out of it? The reason you're not getting something out of church sometimes is because you ain't putting anything into it. You come and you sit there like a bump on a log or like dead dry firewood. Oh, there's no fire here. Are you talking about your heart? You must be. Because you ain't moving. Where's your praise, man? How come Paul and Silas didn't sit back and say, well, how could we worship here? Come on, somebody help us. Somebody help us. When you come to church, don't find the most miserable person and sit there. Join join in company. Find somebody that will praise God. And get along with that. 
and start praising God and start worshiping God. Don't find the most complacent person in the church and say, hey, this is kind of good. This is all right. You can do this in church. You can just you sit back and do nothing and just take it like it's a show. Well, you can if you want, but you're not going to get very much out of it. If you'll get invested and you'll start worshiping God, things will start happening. Just like Paul and Silas, they didn't wait for an orchestra. They didn't wait for their favorite song to be sung. They just said, let's praise the Lord. Oh, my back hurts. Well, let's praise the Lord. They were beaten and whipped, mocked and ridiculed. Hey, let's have church. <laughs> let's have church. Let's praise the Lord. You got to watch your life, man. You got to watch your flesh. Don't let yourself just become so full of excuses. Well, I got to stay home from church today. I think I feel a headache coming on. <laughs> Something's coming on a little bit. It's in Prescott right now, but I'm concerned that by the time I get to church, it will have caught me. Listen, you can do this if you want to. It's your life, man. It's your life. I'm just here telling you, live it large and live it for the Lord. Get invested. Don't look for the farthest seat away from the fire. I hate to use the hockey analogy all the time because I feel like it gets beat to death. But hey, this is Canada. We're Canadian and we understand the hockey language. <laughs> Can you say A? <laughs> Somebody say hockey, eh? <laughs> no slashing. <laughs> I could preach a lot of messages off a hockey game, I guess. So I mean, you just keep giving me material here. They charge more for the better seats. And people pay more. Large amounts of money. Why? They want to get closer. Right? Kim, I know she wanted to be as close to Sidney Crosby as she could. <laughs> I got nothing wrong with hockey games, man. Enjoy a hockey game. Just don't treat Jesus in church like it's nothing. Amen? If you go to a bonfire, you want to be closer to the fire. But you go to church and you want to sit as far back from the preacher as possible. Why? You know, there's bo our body language will sometimes say things that, that speak to where we are. I'm just kind of checking things out. That's all right. That's all right. I can, I, can, I can understand that. But for how long? You know how some folks today, they'll date somebody forever and never get married? They're like, how long have you guys been together? Oh, 25 years. And not got married yet. The kids are gratting and you know all that. and they're Just never got married. Folks approach church like that. Well, we're just kind of checking it out. You've been there seven years. What do you mean you're still checking it out? Get married. Amen? Come on. What does that mean? Get committed. Be committed. Don't, don't just date. Don't just date it forever. At some point, you've got to get invested and say, come on, okay, I'm in this thing. I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part with what God's doing here. I'm believing God's going to do something through this work, through this house. And hey, I want to be a part of that. Sign me up. So get invested. Don't look to, you know, the best seats are the front seats. <laughs> Quiet, that's all right. And I'm not picking on those of you who are sitting further back today. So sigh, take a breath. And this was in my notes before you sat back there. Sorry. Sorry. But the front seats are great seats. You know why? You'll come in and you won't even know who's there. You won't even get a chance to worry about what everybody's wearing. Because you won't even know. You won't even get a chance to know if somebody's giving you a dirty look. It doesn't matter because they're behind you. <laughs> Amen? It doesn't even matter. That's not, you're, you're not there for that. You're, you're there to worship the Lord. And it's great to come to church and have fellowship, enjoy one another, all of that. I love all of that too. But th there is that point where we got, okay, it's time I'm worshiping the Lord. It's my worship time. Don't talk to me about the penguins now. Don't talk to me about the Lakers right now. Worship's on. Amen? 
I mean, I've had people do that to me before when I'm trying to worship the Lord, and they're like, oh, yeah, they're doing real good this year. I'm like, man, come on, it's worship time. We can talk about this after church. (laughs) Hello, somebody. What the preacher preach on, I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) All I know is he took a long time to get it said. (laughs) Get engaged. Look to hear a word from the Lord. Come to church with an expectation. I believe God will say something to me. I believe God will confirm things that I've been praying about. Things that I've been seeking God for. And come to the altar. I'm not saying you got to come every time. But this altar is a great place to be. I've had God do things for me at an altar that I wouldn't have got had I stayed in my pew. What does that mean? Sometimes you got to step out. When you feel God moving on you, step. Amen? Step. Come to the altar. There's so many times I don't even have a word for somebody until they come up. And their step and their action brought about a response from the Lord. Glory to God. What other great points do I have here? (laughs) Be an encourager, not a discourager. Look to encourage somebody. Look to speak life to somebody. You don't get a lot of opportunities to say things to people like that all the time. I mean, you're not in church all the time. So look to say something nice. Look to encourage somebody. You know, if you get an opportunity to talk to somebody, let it sound something like, it's just so great to see you coming to church. I just want you to know it makes me so happy when I see you up there worshiping God. What is that? That's nice. That's nice. People like to hear nice things. Amen? And I can hear somebody, well, they don't always need to hear nice things. Let the preacher take care of that, okay? From you, they need to hear something nice. Because they're not just going to respond to your grumbling and, and, and have a revival like you think that they're going to. Oh, i got to say something. Well, how come you're saying something didn't bring about revival in them? Instead, they didn't show up to church next week. Hello. <laughs> so make sure that what you say is of the Spirit and led of the Lord. Because you could be working against what God is doing in somebody's life rather than being a part of furthering it along and being an encouragement to somebody. A lot of people don't intentionally look to encourage. And you've got to do it intentionally. It's, it's, it, it, when it becomes a part of you where you want, hey, there's an opportunity, I can encourage somebody. There's an opportunity, I can say something. Look to get with it. When worship is moving, move, move, move with it. Your hand should probably get a little bit tired in church. Amen? They should probably get a little bit tired. But if, I mean, if you're in the spirit that much, you might not feel it anyway. But worship God. It's why we came. When the word is being preached, get with the word. Get with the word. Some people are so stuck in offense, in such a combative spirit, that they don't get anything from the Word. They think they're in a fight with their pastor all the time. He's just preaching that because he's trying to get me, and I, I'm going to sit here, and he, I'm going to get him too with my hat. You know, this isn't a fight against you. This is a fight for you. Amen? Get with what God, the, the pastor's fighting for you, for you. If there's a bad attitude in you, and he's f- preaching against that, he's still fighting for you. I mean, is that what you want? Well, no, I want to keep my bad attitude. Well, it's going to hinder you in your work with the Lord. So get with it. I mean, get with it. Learn to have an appreciation for the Word of God. If you do, you'll appreciate those who preach it. You'll be thankful. Because there's places in the world where church isn't just like, you know, I can go here, I can go there, I can go there. Where there's actually, you know, resistance. People trying to shut it down. And people trying to storm the church. And people causing disruptions. And that stuff starts happening. That stuff will happen here sometimes. It's happened here before. You'll see people come in and they'll start trying to cause disruptions. Why? Because the devil doesn't like what God's doing. We'll shut it down. We'll keep on going. 
People will try and cause division. We'll unify. We'll keep on going. Amen? I mean, if you're going to be bold, be bold in the right direction. You don't got to be obnoxious. You don't got to be mean. Be bold in the right direction. When somebody's gossiping to you, say, I don't want to hear that. Be bold in that direction. Be bold to say, hey, I love them. Don't talk to me like that. You must got the wrong church. I don't do my pastor like that. Be bold that way and watch how quickly things start changing. People, you know, if people are comfortable around you saying things like that, there's a reason. There's a reason. You said it, Jerry, not me. <laughs> get engaged. Look to get with it. Say amen. Shout hallelujah. Say a. Hey. Say ouch. Say yes. Say thank you, Lord. You know, th this isn't a church where we just tell everybody, just be quiet. Now we have the benediction. You know, that we, th that's not how we do church. And yeah, sometimes I realize that there, there's quieter times, quieter moments, and there's a hush. But le let me tell you, this is also a place you can get excited, where you can say hallelujah. You can say yes. Preach that. Preach that. Preach that. And get excited with the word, man. Pastor was pretty bland on Sunday. How are you? <laughs> All right, you think these points were fun. Wait till we get to our last one here. <laughs> My next point that I want to close on. You want more of God? You got to listen. <laughs> You gotta listen. I know that this isn't a popular thing today because the Bible said that in the last days we would see rebellion. Children would be rebellion against their parents and that kind of spirit, that'll also try and keep, keep, creep into churches where people just don't want to listen to anything. Just don't want, I mean, they're, sometimes they're not even listening with their ears. They just got so much other stuff going on in their head and I can relate because I got a pretty busy mind sometimes. But when we recognize the word is being preached and we start getting with that, it start, you start focusing in on it. Amen? You start getting in the flow of that. You start feeling the anointing that the preacher's preaching in. It starts enhancing what God is doing. One puts a thousand to flight, two put ten thousand to flight. And I've been to churches where people couldn't listen to anything, man. I went to one church years and years ago. You couldn't even get people to stand. Let's all stand. Nobody move. Little, little, I'll tell you what happened. Not much. We didn't have much happen in those meetings. <laughs> we didn't have much happen in those meetings. Why? You've got to respond. You've got to respond. And if you can't respond to the little things like that, don't tell me you're responding to the Word of God when it's preached. Because you can't respond to that minister. You can't respond to that vessel. And it's not like they didn't like me because they didn't even know me. It's not like I preached something real hard for them last time I was there. These people didn't even know me, but you just couldn't get people to stand. They, they just wanted to, whatever, just be, just be comfortable. Just be comfortable. Just not hearing. Just, just you know, what, Did you even hear what I said? Because they're not listening. You got to listen. It's good to listen. You ever talk to somebody and they never take a time, any time at all, to listen? They'll ask you questions and then they'll answer. <laughs> Amen. I said they'll ask you questions and then they'll answer for you. Never take any time just, just, just to listen. Man, you're going to miss out on a lot of growth like that. Especially when you got an opportunity to hear from somebody that actually carries something good that carries something from God, somebody that carries anointing in your life, and you don't know how just to listen. You know, Dave McGrew, who's going to be here next week, he's one of the greatest men I've ever had the privilege of knowing. He is a scholar of scholars. I'm telling you, he's a leader of leaders. But he'll sit front row and he'll say, Amen, thank you for that. Thank you. Why? He still loves the Word appreciates the word of God when it's preached. 
Amen. Your, your, your pastor's here. He's fighting for you, man. He's not against you. You don't need to sit there and, and, and think you're in some kind of confrontation with each other. Even if it's a hard word. Be appreciative and recognize I'm, I need to hear that. Man, that's a good word and it's truth. It's truth. I'm glad I heard that. I needed to hear that. That could save me a whole lot of heartache. That could save me a whole lot of trouble. And God, you're so good that you would speak to me right now to try and stop that, 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 that cliff that I was about to go off of. You got to listen. You know, we talk about King David. Before David was king, David was a good listener. And I'm going to read you this in 1 Samuel 18. I'm not going to be much longer. And if you haven't said amen yet, you can say amen. amen. First closing. <laughs> <laughs> first samuel 18 and 1 new living translation says david had finished talking with saul he met jonathan the king's son there was an immediate bond between them for jonathan loved david from that day on saul kept david with him and wouldn't let him return home and jonathan made a solemn pact with david because he loved him as he loved himself and we're talking about that in regards to loyalty that David was a loyal person. Jonathan sealed the pack by taking off his robe and giving it to David together with his tunic, sword, bow, and belt. Now catch this. Whatever Saul asked David to do, David did it successfully. Whatever Saul asked David to do, David did it successfully. He didn't say, well, I'm the one that's got an anointing. I've got, an, I've got a ministry too. I don't got to listen to the king. I don't got to listen. No, he just did what he was supposed to do. Now there came a point where Saul starts chucking javelins at David. And David didn't just stick around and take it in the chest. <laughs> Amen. It wasn't because he was disloyal. It was because he was wise enough to know if I sit at this table any longer, he's going to kill me. <laughs> Hello, somebody. There's some environments you got to know when it's time to walk out of it. There's some relationships you got to know. Well, it looks like that's over, isn't it? <laughs> you keep trying to get that thing going again, and you're, not miss you're, you're missing all the red flags, buddy. They've moved on. They moved on. They're not in your corner anymore. You, you got to be able to recognize those who are in your corner and those who aren't, because not everybody is. David did those things that he, he served well. He followed well. He followed well. He was a good follower. And he became a great leader. Why? Because he was a good follower. And in order to be a good leader, you also have to know how to follow. Because we're all following the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Good preaching, Pastor. In 1 Samuel 15 and 22... It talks about where Samuel is speaking to Saul, and Saul has disobeyed God. God gave specific instructions to Saul, but Saul disobeyed the Lord. He did what he thought was best, instead of just listening to God's clear command. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord? This is 1522. Your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to His voice? Listen! <laughs> Exclamation point! Do we have that up there? Yeah. Hey Amen. Look at that. Everybody see it? <laughs> Screenshot that, somebody. Listen! Exclamation point. We need to learn how to listen. Learn how to listen to what the Lord is saying in our hearts. Sometimes you just got to be quiet with God and let Him speak to you. Just let him speak to you. You don't have to do all the talking. Sometimes you just sit there in an atmosphere of worship and, and God will speak to you. I found that when we do worship, pre-service worship on Wednesday nights, so many times the Lord just starts speaking to me about things because there's just something about being in that atmosphere and I just start hearing from God about things, about people and different things that the Lord just starts speaking to me about. If you, all you do in your prayer time is talk to the Lord, you don't leave any room to listen. 
you also have to have an expectation in your heart that God will answer and God will talk to you. Might not be an audible voice all the time, or he may do so. But he can give you direction. He can show you an answer. He can speak through somebody else. And if you are aware and looking, you'll be able to recognize it when it's God. Amen? You'll be able to recognize it when it's God and be able to say, Thank you, Lord. You confirmed it. You spoke to me. You gave me the answer to the thing that I've been praying about. Saul didn't think it was that important to obey God completely. But partial obedience is disobedience. I say that again. Partial obedience is disobedience. And he said, listen, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness is bad as worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you from king or rejected you as being king. Saul disobeyed the Lord and it separated him. Now, I know all of us have disobeyed at one point or another at some time or another, even in small things sometimes. I remember one I was sharing this with somebody. The stupid things we sometimes wrestle with God about. Amen? I mean, I talk about fighting the preacher, but many of us, we're saved and we're fighting God. <laughs> Amen? We're saved and we're fighting Him. And, and, and He loves you like nobody else. And yet you're fighting Him. Fighting His will. Fighting what He wants to do. Not even realizing he has a better way. He'll do better things than you can do on your own if you'll let him get involved, man. But I, I was sharing this with uh, somebody one day because it's just such a stupid thing to struggle with. But I, I felt the Lord speak to me to give $50. This was like 20 years ago, or more than 20 years ago. So $50 could buy you a car back then. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> It could buy you more than it would buy you now, that's for sure. Would give you a full tank of gas. <laughs> but I was a young man, and $50 to me, that was actually quite a bit for what I, what I was making and, and where I was at at that time. And yet it just, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's not even what, what the amount was. I just, it was just a struggle for some reason. And so I had this $50 bill, and I'm on my way to church. And instead of just doing what God told me to do with that $50 and go there and put it in the offering, I stopped and I bought a pack of Tic Tacs with that $50. <laughs> now, I didn't need Tic Tacs that bad. And this wasn't because I'm thinking like my breath. I just wanted some Tic Tacs. I'm like, look, it's just like looking for a way to get out of what God is saying. <laughs> but I get to church and out of the ordinary, the secretary, the one who looks after a lot of the finances, is talking about how the church is having a hard time right now financially. And I realized, oh, God was talking to me. So I went and borrowed a dollar from somebody that I could make my $50. <laughs> yeah. And put it in the offering. And did what God told me to do. But sometimes we, we approach things like that, you know, like the little things that, that, that we should be quick to respond to, and, and, and yet we struggle. But it's good to start learning to listen to God in the small things so that you're ready when He starts speaking to you about the bigger things. Amen? <laughs> because someday He might actually ask you to do something big that is life-changing. And if you can't give $50 in the offering plate, you're probably going to have a hard time when the Lord says, forsake all and go preach in Africa. I'm not telling you anybody to do that. <laughs> but if you can learn to listen to what He's saying in your life right now, it makes the difference. Glory to God. You know when David got in trouble, second closing? is when the kings went off to war and David stayed home. He wasn't engaged. He was coasting. And that's when he seen Bathsheba. And that's when his life turned in a wrong direction. Because he wasn't engaged in what he should be engaged in. And so he started finding trouble other places. Amen? Amen? Be a troublemaker in the devil's kingdom. Because if you're not, you'll likely end up being a troublemaker somewhere else. 
<laughs> Amen. Good preaching, Pastor. And now that everybody's feeling motivated, let's all stand. <laughs> and on a high note. <laughs> How many want more of God? And by that, I mean deeper. I mean, He already lives in you, so it's not like He's just, you know, filling you up in a little bit giving you another little bit. He lives in you. But there's so much of Himself to reveal to you and for you to know Him and walk with Him in greater intimacy and be hungry for Him. Hallelujah. And learn how to yield yourself as a vessel of God. It's amazing how the initial evidence of the infilling of the Spirit is the evidence of other tongues. And the Bible talked about the tongue being a member that no man can tame. That people struggle with the tongue and the things that they say. And yet that is the place that we yield an evidence of the Holy Spirit filling our lives. And I tell you today, He wants to fill you. He wants to fill you. If you've not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it is for you. Amen. If you received it 20 years ago but haven't done anything much with it yet, there's still so much more for you. And He'll fill you afresh today. And so I'm just going to ask, would you just lift up your hands wherever you are and say, if you would, fill me up, Lord. Fill my cup. I present myself to you, a vessel. Take my life. I want to be invested. I want to be committed. I want to be fit. I want to be meat for the Master's use. So touch my life, Lord. Consecrate me. Shape me. Mold me. Fashion me. You are the potter. I yield my life to you. My heavenly Father, who loves me, who cares for me, and will reveal your purposes in me. In Jesus' name. Your purpose is connected to God's kingdom. It's not separated. Find your purpose. Connected to God's kingdom. Watch what God begins to do in your life. I'm going to close today, but if there's anybody here that needs prayer, if there's anybody here that you would like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'd ask you to come forward today. If there's anybody here and you're in this place and you just need prayer for a particular thing, I'm going to give you opportunity to come today. We're going to lay hands on you. We're going to pray and we're going to believe God to touch you because He is still a miracle-working God and there is still nothing too hard for our God. If there's anybody, come right now. You need prayer. Come. Those of you who don't, I'm just going to ask you to be engaged still and pray with us today. Pray with us as we lay hands on people. Believe with us. Believe with us. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jerry, what do you guys need prayer for today? I'll just lift up your hands, both of you, to the Lord. And the Bible says, out of your belly flows rivers of living water. It's a flow. It's a flow. It's not a forced thing. It's just a flow. And you just yield yourself to the Lord. You yield yourself to the Lord. Because He desires to fill and He freely fills. In Jesus' name. It's already on you, Gloria. There you go. That's the Holy Ghost. 
There it is. There it is. Just speak it right out by faith. Loudly. Loudly. Go ahead. Let it go. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. Receive the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You see, it's not hard, folks. It's not hard. It's just a flow. It's just a flow. It's just like getting in the rivers of water and letting it just take you. Just take you. Amen. Gloria served the Lord a long time, and I wouldn't even have never known that she didn't speak in tongues. <laughs> Amen. But you do now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bless Jerry too, Father, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for Ray. He's a good man. And I know, Lord, he's just been going through a hard time. But I thank you, Lord, today for your touch upon Ray. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I just feel like I need a couple men just to come up and surround Ray here. You're not alone, brother. You're not alone, brother. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for your touch upon my friend today, our brother Ray, that in the name of the Lord Jesus, as your Holy Spirit touch Ray today, Lord, I thank you that all of the weight that has been trying to weigh him down lifts off of his shoulders right now in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you that the joy of the Lord spring up in his heart today and your peace that is perfect manifest over our brother, Shalom in Jesus' name. Your perfect peace in the name of Jesus. Touch our brother, touch him in his mind, and touch him in his body today, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Amen. Just stay with him for a few minutes, guys, and just pray with that brother. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Anybody else today? Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Lord, as they stand in proxy today, thank you, Jesus. Phil, I'll get you over here, my friend. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that there is victory and Satan is under our feet. And despite Satan's best efforts to try and undo the things that the Lord has done, I thank you, Lord, today that you are so much greater within us than he that is within this world and in the name of Jesus. And as they stand in place for those people that they love today, we speak and declare the word of the Lord over them. You sent your word and you healed our disease. And even as we pray right now, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, we thank you that the word of God is without barrier, in Jesus' name, without restriction. And so we pray in the name of Jesus for a breakthrough, in Jesus' mighty name. We pray for a breakthrough right now. And we declare in the name of Jesus, that everything in every place that the enemy has tried to work, his works are destroyed. His powers are broken. And the enemy is stopped in his tracks. And we declare breakthrough in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Breakthrough in Jesus' mighty name. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Everybody else, would you just raise your hands and receive a blessing from the Lord today? In the name of Jesus, Lord, I just pray the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord over all those assembled in the house today. That every, every house, every person represented be touched by your grace. 
touched by your goodness, Lord. Touched by your goodness. Your soft touch. Your precious touch. And Lord, that there'll just be that sweetness. That sweetness. You are honey to us, Lord. You are honey to us, Lord. And thank you, Father, that you just sweeten up the lives of people, Lord, in Jesus' name. As your presence touches lives. And we taste of that honey. And I just pray, Lord, that people will taste and experience the sweetness of your presence. The sweetness of your presence. As they worship you this week, as they pray, as they press in, they will experience the sweetness of the Lord. And their hearts will be filled with a song and the joy of the Lord abounding. In Jesus' mighty name. And if you receive that today, then let the church say amen. 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 God bless you today. You are dismissed in the mighty name of Jesus.